Hello everybody and thank you for joining me for another watercolor tutorial. Today we are going to be painting four different mountain painting techniques and given that I paint a lot of mountains in my tutorials I thought it would be appropriate to finally release this specific tutorial so let's get right into it. This first uh, technique is what I call the layered mountain technique and perhaps it's one of the easiest but it's definitely one of the most versatile and I really like this technique. So to get started you're going to choose whatever pigment or color that you want to work with. In my case I chose blue and you're just going to be using one uh, one color or one um, tray of, of paint, I suppose, you're just going to be altering the um, pigmentation or the intensity of the pigment. So in that first layer, you're watering your pigment down quite heavily, uh, making sure to paint a bunch of different peaks just for versatility. And once that layer has completely dried, you'll paint a second layer over top, making sure not to cover up all of the peaks on uh, the previous layer and when that layer has dried you basically just repeat that for your third and fourth layers making sure not to cover up the layers uh, behind you know making sure to leave peaks from every single layer so that it looks like there are mountains and mountains and mountains fading into the background just make sure that your layers are completely dry between each layer, otherwise they will bleed into one another and you won't achieve that clean and crisp mountain look that we're going for. So for the second technique, um, this, is, this is another pretty easy technique. Uh, you can go ahead and pencil in the rough shape of a triangle. Um, you can add some little mini peaks coming off the sides to make it look a little bit more realistic because if it's just a straight triangle, it's not going to look as realistic as we would like it to. But for the first layer, you're just going to use a very watered down pigment. So again, you can choose whatever color you'd like, but I went with a pink for this one. So uh, you just fill in the entire triangle with that watered down pigment. Once it has completely dried, you're going to go over that uh, zigzaggy line that you would have penciled in earlier. So basically, you just paint a line that is quite uneven, kind of goes back and forth all the way down your mountain, and then tapers off towards the left side. The reason why we want to taper it off is because we want to make it look like the mountain is flattening out towards the bottom. So you can you know, make the zigzag go either direction, but I thought it would be nice if it went to the left. And you're just filling in half of your mountain with a more pigmented version of the color that you chose for your first layer. And the illusion that this creates is that, um, you know, the sun is perhaps setting or rising on one side of the mountain, and that is what creates this darker shadowed part on the other side of the mountain. Okay, so for our third technique, we're going to be kind of blending two techniques together here. So we are going to first be using the layering technique. So again, you want to use a very watered down pigment here. I'm going with a purple this time. So you want to paint a rough looking triangle a little bit towards the right side because once that completely dries, we're going to be painting a darker mountain covering about half of the mountain we, we painted previously. So here on the second layer, you are using a lot more pigment to make this particular layer stand out a lot more than the previous one. So, so far we've used the layering technique, but now we're going to incorporate some of the technique that we used in the second mountain. So, you can go ahead and take uh, that same really dark purple pigment and just start applying that same jaggedy line coming from the top of the, the mountain peak um, but this time we're not really going to be filling in the entire side with that pigment. We're not letting the layer underneath dry. That's the main difference. Here we're kind of using a wet and wet technique so that that pigment allows 
uh, or the wet and wet technique allows that pigment to sort of spread out and uh, create these rough looking jaggedy sections and it makes the mountain look a lot more realistic. You can also bring some of those jaggedy lines down on the lighter side, the, the side that the sun is supposed to be hitting. And again, this creates the illusion that this mountain is very mean and jaggedy looking, um, sort of like the peaks that you see in Hawaii. You can definitely go over the background mountain as well if you choose, or you can just leave it um, light and plain like I did. So for the final mountain, this is perhaps my favorite technique. Uh, we are going to be basically painting a bunch of triangles within the main triangle shape of uh, the mountain. So you can pencil in your sketch sort of um, as a, as a template to follow or you can just do it freehand. But again, I have watered down my chosen color, which is sort of a muted green gray color. And I'm just painting in or filling in the main shape of the mountain with this watered down color. Then you want to take a more pigmented version of this color and you're going to uh, start off what you know appears to be that same jaggedy line down, down the middle of the mountain, but this time that line is going to split into several triangles. And once that layer has completely dried, you can go over it again with um, a little bit more pigments just to make those lines more pronounced and make them look like there are actually triangles within triangles. So you are basically making it look like there are jaggedy, line, uh, jaggedy edges going down on either side of this mountain, not just on one side. So in this case, the sun might be hitting the front of the mountain, which um, you know allows both sides to have some shadow and sun. So in addition to painting the jaggedy lines coming down the middle of the mountain into the triangles, you can also add some details coming from the bottom of the mountain. So some shadows that are extending from the base, reaching towards the middle of the mountain. You can even paint some shapes sort of in between the edges, which again adds a little bit more complexity to the mountain and makes it look um, more jaggedy and more realistic. And that's about it for our mountain techniques. Um, so if you enjoyed this tutorial, please let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you in next week's video.